Welcome again to the big match, and three more matches for you today. Our lineup is West Ham against Everton, that's our main match, and we shall back that up with Coventry against Burnley, with the winner coming in injury time there, and Newcastle against Tottenham, the best comeback possibly of the whole day. Our guest today in the studio, Frank Lampard, the West Ham defender. We shall also be getting a word from Everton skipper Roger Kenyon and our old favourite Henry Cooper, who was at the West Ham match. There's your letters too. We shall be testing your football knowledge. But first we go across to West Ham, to Upton Park, for the first division game between West Ham and Everton. And it's West Ham who are out first. They've played in the European Cup Winners' Cup this week against a Finnish side. They won, but they haven't been in their best form over the past two or three games. And they'll be hoping to snap back on form today against a side that's also been in Europe this week, Everton, led out by Roger Kenyon, who went out of the UFA Cup to AC Milan on a controversial penalty. I wonder if there'll be any reaction from that. But at least Everton have a good record here for matches between West Ham and Everton. They've won four times on their last eight visits. And these, then, are the two teams for this First Division match today. And West Ham, in fact, have sprung something of a surprise. Alan Taylor, their cup final hero, is only the sub. Keith Robson gets the number seven shirt. Clyde Best comes in at nine. As for Everton, defender Mick Bernard is injured, but they have reserve strength in depth. And although they've got a reputation for being big spenders, six of this side began as Everton apprentices. Well, a good number of those players will be on trial today, because about to take his seat in the stand is the England manager, Don Reevy. And you can only guess that the players will interest him in particular. My feeling is that Frank Lampard, uh, the West Ham fullback, could well be one of them. And there have been good reports lately, too, of the Everton defender, Mick Lyons. Now we come to the toss-up between the skippers, Roger Kenyon of Everton and Billy Bonds of West Ham. The referee there, incidentally, is Tom Reynolds from Wales, who last weekend he was refereeing a European match in faraway Iceland. Conditions a little more moderate today for him, and indeed for the 31,000 crowd, who are now waiting for the game to get underway. And it's Everton who kick off in a chain strip of light tangerine shirts, blue shorts, attacking the goal to our right. West Ham, as usual, of course, in their claret and blue shirts, white shorts, and an infringement there in the opening seconds of the game. Steve Sargent, the man who was injured in a collision there with Clyde Best, Painful knock on the knee, and referee Tom Reynolds bringing the game back for a free kick to Everton. That in the first ten seconds of the game. The ball back with Big Di Davis, the Welsh international goalkeeper. An unfair challenge there by Gary Jones on Graham Patton, free kick to West Ham. Graham Patton who scored a brilliant winning goal last week against Wolverhampton. Here's Patton again. A West Ham throw. Best. A tussle there with Kenyon. Keith Robson. And another West Ham throw. Everybody expecting Everton to play a strong defensive game here today. And at the moment they're being forced back onto defence. Patton with the throw for West Ham. A little effort. But quite a good long throw. And was that a push on Best? The crowd howling all around. But... Uh, Tom Reynolds saying no, Kenyon getting it away, Lyons only half getting it away, Lampard now, a thundering shot for straight into the arms of Di Davis. Competing very well in defence in the middle of the field for everything at the moment, Everton. Here's uh, Dobson now for Jones. Lyons made a run on the outside for him. Latchford's on the far side and got up very well indeed and Telfer almost got there. And in the end, Kevin Locke had to turn that away for a corner. A very good jump on the far side by Big Bob Latchford. Telfer almost made it and a very quick and effective interception by Locke. So Roger Kenyon coming up again. Another corner for Everton. Lyons is up there too. And just skidded off the head of Clyde Best. And Keith Robson keeps it in play. Patton's made a run down the left. A good ball by Robson. Patton in full flight. Now Brooking. Lost it and found it again. Holland is right up there too. Good sweeping attack by West Ham this. And Brooking has taken it just a shade too far and Lyons turned it back to Di Davis. Dobson for Pearson. Here's Latchford. Found Telfer. Now Dobson with a shot. Cannoned off Kevin Locke. 
Oh, and Day had to kick it away, and it was handball. <laughs> well, West Ham were in a bit of trouble there, and they were saved really when Day had to fly hack that one away off balance, and it hit Pearson, who was on the ground, on the hand. Well, they're getting good crowds here at West Ham, and that's a good vantage point for those youngsters. McDowell now with the throw. Long one. Best is there. Can Patton get in? Maybe Lampard can. No, Pearson is there first. But Lampard finds Brookie. He's all right. He's onside. A chance for Lampard. Oh, and he's hit it over. Well, what a miss that was. But at least it looked easy as the Everton defence came forward thinking they were going to catch everybody offside. The linesman kept his flag down and Lampard was free. He tried really an ambitious lob and it was too high. Well, Davis will breathe a bit easier after that. And McDowell plays it back today. Well, the crowd's still buzzing with that miss by Lampard. A throw to West Ham. Keith Robson. Davis catching well as Holland came in. Lions to Buckley, Holland's after him, played it fairly, Padden jinking, looking for a yard, and finds Billy Bonds. Crowd now getting behind West Ham. Their skipper on the ball. Clyde Best playing a 1-2 with Billy Bonds. Can he get a shot in? Well, it was not handball, said the referee. Tom Reynolds, well placed, as that ball came in and hit Roger Kenyon. No penalty given. Billy Bonds turning it back. Now it's with Lampard. Oh, Mc Holland took something there from Mick Lyons. Some of this Everton tackling at the moment is tough to say the least. Here's Brooking. Oh, a nice little chip by him, Billy Bonds right in! Oh, on earth did Bonds miss that? He arrived late, stealthily and without Everton being aware, as Brooking, with no room at all, crossed that in so delicately, and Bonds made contact, but not quite positively enough, just wide of the far post, but a brilliant piece of improvised football by West Ham. Here's Brooking, the man who made that chance. Buckley, certainly in terms of a spectacle, I think we need a goal now probably from West Ham to force Everton to come out and attack a little more. Jones, Brooking thumping that one away as Jones goes down. Oh, that was a very severe challenge there by Lyons, and Holland is taking it into his own hands, which is a silly thing to do, and Padden is saying, get away from that. That was a terrible challenge there by Lyons, and he'll have to go to the referee. A bad challenge. It certainly won't have impressed Don Revy in the stand, who's here watching this game today, and I would have thought Mick Lyons is one of the people he'll watch. His name will go into the book for that, and Holland might well find that his goes in as well for retaliating. Tom Reynolds having a very strong word as well with the West Ham player. You can understand Holland's frustration, but he really must not take the law into his own hands. Lyons goes into the book, and I think Tom Reynolds is probably saying, yours has got to go in as well, Pat Holland, and there's nothing I can do about it. The name goes into the book. Well, I wonder what Don Revy thought of that. Alan Wade, the coaching chief on the right of the FA, smiles. I don't think there are too many smiles elsewhere. At least it looked like a smile. Robson to Brooking. Best has gone deep, Holland's gone towards the near post. 
It's Clyde Best going in again, beaten in the air though. Robson with a shot. Oh, uh, no matter than a foot wide. But in fact, an offside decision given. Robson hitting that very, very well indeed. But an offside. As the whistle goes for half time, Mervyn Day then collects up his belongings and West Ham and their fans pondering how it was, I suppose, that Frank Lampard missed that goal. And one of the reasons they haven't had too many scoring chances, West Ham, is some brilliant defence by Everton and particularly by their captain and number five, Roger Kenyon. A lot more to come on the big match this afternoon, but a half time score then at Upton Park that reads West Ham nil, Everton nil. We'll be right back with the second half. to Upton Park then as West Ham get us away now attacking the goal to our right after a goal this first half in fact this game has got quite a pedigree of goals it finished 3-2 to Everton last season and 4-3 to West Ham the season before so maybe things are going to brighten up a little bit in the second half although in fact Everton's scoring record is less than impressive they've scored only two in their last five games they've conceded only three in their last six but here's Brooking now, as Robson tries to get a diving header in, and Clements hammers it away again. That's the second ball on the pitch. A blue balloon. Bonds. McDowell. Good skill there by McDowell. Now Brooking, can he get the shot in? Thought about it, maybe a little too hard. Decided that uh, he would try just that looping, curling shot. Way off the target. Lampard winning it well in the air. Billy Bonds. Here's Brooking. Bonds has continued his run, but he's taken Everton defenders with him. Oh, nicely played by Robson for Brooking. Played on for Bonds. And little Buckley was there to beat big Billy Bonds. And find Martin Dobson. Gary Jones. Buckley looking for a return pass as well. Jones now taking it on for Everton. And still going on for Everton. He's uh, left McDowell behind him. And Pearson with a chance off. Day was already tumbling and Pearson didn't get the right sort of touch. As Jones left McDowell and turned it in. And Pearson didn't really hit it well. And Day went down to save. Brooking. Holland, a nice touch there for Best. But just watch those tangerine shirts closing in again. Sargent getting it away. Latchford first to react to it. Pearson. Dobson. Buckley. Sargent. McLyons. Hit low towards Pearson. Lampard away. Comes to Clyde Best. Well, they pushed a few people up that time, Everton, and now they might get caught out if Holland can get past Clements. No foul there, said the referee. Play on. And now, can Holland get past him? No, it has got a corner for West Ham. So, best arriving. Taylor's there. Padden will curl another corner in. Towards McDowell. Taylor again. Played wide for Brooking. 
Still with Brooking, this could be interesting. No! Oh my goodness, it was a back heeler by Holland that nearly went in. And Lampard now. Curled right across the face of the goal again, but an offside flag was up. Well, that was remarkable after Brooking did so well on that byline and crossed it in. And it came to Pat Holland, and he back heeled it in. Somehow, it was scrambled away from that Everton line. Pat Holland so close to giving West Ham the lead. Latchford's header. George Telfer. Jones. A free kick. Probably looked worse than it was. The referee taking the point, though, and having a quick, quiet word with uh, John McDowell. Dobson. Clements. Dobson. Buckley. Ball in play, and Buckley did very well indeed there for Everton. Mick Lyons was right up there. Sergeant. Telfer. Jones trying his luck on the far side now. Oh, he... Well, that was obstruction, said the referee. And that's why Gary Jones nudged uh, Graham Patton in the back. So a free kick to Everton. And of course, when a side defends for so long and is pushed back onto defence, they very often sneak out and get it in the decisive goal. And that's what Gary Jones has done there. One nil to Everton. Entirely against the run of the play. And Gary Jones, the man who was fouled in the first place, the free kick came over. Slack marking by the West Ham defence. Gary Jones header. Pass Mervyn Day. West Ham nil. Everton one. The scorer, Gary Jones. And that only is second goal of the season. Well, as I was saying, it does so often happen. But aside gets a little bit lax when it has so much of the game and attacks so often that it can get caught with a sucker punch and that's what West Ham were caught with there. Their marking was not above reproach in that situation. And now they've got a lot of work to do against a side that has conceded only three goals in its last six games. And has won four on four of the last eight visits here to Upton Park. Everybody now back for Everton, bar George Telfer. And West Ham now with something like 26 minutes to get themselves back in the game and above all, of course, to save their unbeaten league record. Goal kick. Mick Lyons. Now Brooking. Now Patton. Robson. Flicked on again for Patton. There's the chance for him and he didn't take it and Clements was there to hammer it away. The ball just wouldn't drop for, drop for Graham Patton there. And here he is again. All the tricks over his head. Clyde Best is waiting and so too is Kenyon. And so too is Lampard. And you sense also now there's a touch of anxiety about West Ham's play coming forward. And one of the most unpopular men in the field, or at least in the stadium, must be the Everton manager, Billy Bingham, there, saying to calm down, and yet he's organised this Everton side so well in defence. Buckley not being uh, thrown off the scent at all by all those shimmies by Trevor Brooking. But a throw to West Ham. 
Robson. Crossed well. Can Holland get in? Now, uh, what's been given? A corner? Yes, a corner. Ball coming off the back of Dave Clements. West Ham crowd again getting behind their team. And Padden again with this corner for West Ham. Hit low this time. Sargent obligingly putting it back to Padden. And again, Padden hitting Sargent with it. And Padden now with another chance. That time it's a shot off! And again, West Ham have cracked that ball across that Everton penalty area. And again, just for the want of the tiniest touch, it's gone away. And West Ham get nothing. Bonds finding Lampard. And it's going to be Jim Pearson who's going to go off. He may not know it yet, but the number four card is out. Yes, now he will know it because the card is up for Pearson to see. He goes off and Ken McNaught is on. Another Everton throw. Taking a long time over these throws. Lions. A throw to Everton. Alan Taylor's coming down now on towards the touchline. He's going to be coming onto the field as a substitute in a moment. But at the moment, Everton, the crowd have seen him. It's a corner. And he'll be on in a moment. Rob Jenkins there getting out of the bench there to try and attract the referee's attention. It's George Telfer with the corner for Everton. Curled deeper this time towards McNaught. Oh, and headed off the line by... Frank Lampard, great header there by McNaught, and touched on again, and Lampard eventually got it away. Now it's McDowell. Played on for Patton, but not accurately enough. Dave Clements to Bob Latchford. Telfer, stopped by McDowell, and away goes Brooking, he's got best up as well. Brooking going on past that challenge of Kenyon, and he had to hold on to it, because he could see that Best was offside, and Kenyon is down and he's injured. Now it's uh, Robson. A chip in there. And finally McLyon's got it away. McDowell again, past the injured Kenyon. Lampard on the far side, deliberately handling the ball. And it's Clyde Best who's coming off. And Alan Taylor on. Well, he's got six goals this season. And West Ham desperately won number seven now. Will it come for Brooking? Well, he made it come for him in the end. A little chip through there towards Holland and Patton taking it on and Davis out to smother that very well indeed. Nice little touch by Brooking, a great pounce by Patton and some fairly brave goalkeeping too by Di Davis. So a corner for West Ham, Brooking to take it. This one will swing inside. Too high for them all. And here's Roger Kenyon. McNaught. Brookie, Holland. Well, Pat Holland's been known to get one or two important late goals in his time. Trying to find Billy Bonds there. 
But McLyons was there before him. Lampard still injured on the far side. Trying to get himself up. Good play by Locke. And a nice bit of play and a good pass there for Patton. Now for Brooking. A touch on for Billy Bonds. Again, Clemens forcing him out towards the touchline. Now will it come for Brooking? Hit straight at Di Davis. John Lyle, the West Ham manager, knows that there's a matter of two minutes now between his side and their unbeaten record. Brooking. Brooking again. Good ball run there well by Robson and now for McDowell. Oh, and he hit it straight at Di Davis. While well, Robson won that bravely, it was flicked on there into the path of McDowell. And Davis narrowed the angle sufficiently to prevent West Ham getting a last-minute equaliser. Bonds right up there. West Ham have pushed everybody in. Bonds is there and it's over the top. Well, I suppose when John Lyle saw that one, cannon off the goalkeeper, he knew if he didn't know before that it really wasn't West Ham's day. Here's Jones. No advantage there, but it doesn't matter for Everton in any case because West Ham's unbeaten league record has gone. Everton have come here, they've defended and they've scored the killer goal with a sucker punch. Gary Jones, the number 11, was the man who got it with that header in the second half. After West Ham had had so much more of the game, a frustrating afternoon for them and for their fans, but victory for Everton, their fifth victory here at Upton Park in the last nine visits. And a final scoreline then at Upton Park reads West Ham nil, Everton 1. Well, after that game, various people said various things. The West Ham team manager, John Lyle, very rational indeed, I thought, said that the defeat was acceptable because it would make his players think again. Ron Greenwood paid tribute to the skill that Everton showed in defence. And the former boxing champion, Henry Cooper, had this to say when he was asked to name the man of the match. Well, I give it to Frank Lampard, I think, because, you know, what I see him do, he done well. He was, he was like an old, I like to see an old head on, you know, young shoulders. He was, I could see him... Uh, especially uh, in one half there, he was back there marshalling the old defence, getting them straightened up, you know. And then I think he laid a few good balls on in defence and in attack. He was up front as well, you know. Well, here is the man of the match uh, in Henry Cooper's book, Frank Lampard. Didn't like the bit about the old head on young shoulders, Frank, did you? Not really, is it? But he's a bit too big to argue with, really. I thought so. Uh, what, did you, what did you think of your own performance yesterday? Um, quite satisfied, really. Um, the goal, the miss, if it had gone in, it would have... Married off me, really. The lob in the first half would yeah. have been uh, found for yeah. you. The fact that Don Reavy was there, and, and obviously people sort of draw all sorts of conclusions, and one would think that you're the sort of player he'd be looking at, does that put an extra pressure on you? Um, you're, you're, you know, you're, I was aware that he was there, but um, I think you've you know, just got to go out and play your own game, if, you know, if possible. Yeah. How frustrating was it playing against that Everton defence yesterday? They played very well. They played very well, you know, defensively. Everybody worked back from, and uh, that was very hard to break down. You know, give them credit. They played very well at the back. Yes. In fact, talking to John Lyle afterwards, I was asking how a, a defence like that could be broken down. He was talking about filling space and so on, which bamboozled me, but I'm sure not you. But he made the point about if players arrive late to various situations, they shake off their markers. And we've got a couple of examples of that uh, to show you and get your views on. And the first one, when Trevor Brooking sets up a chance for Billy Bonds, who does just what John Lyle wanted here. Trevor, in fact, turns this in. And this, I think, is what John meant about people arriving late. You'll see Frank when he comes in that he's shaken off those two Everton defenders. And unfortunately for West Ham, Billy Bonds didn't quite get the touch, but you see he's lost all the, yeah. all the markers yeah. there, hasn't he? And then there was this other incident right at the end. Again, Trevor Brookie making a chance. Tell us about this one for John McDowell. Yeah, John was a bit unlucky. As the ball came to him, I think he just pushed it on a little bit too, too far in front of him. And but again, keeper. he's shaken everybody off. Yeah, he's in, he's in space, and the keeper just came out and narrowed the angle. He didn't done very well, actually, the keeper. It wasn't like John could do that, I think. Who were the Everton defenders particularly who impressed you most? What was it about their defence? I thought the old back four played very well, uh, in particular uh, Mick Lyons and Roger Kenyon. I think Roger Kenyon you know, was, uh, was brilliant. He can't have done himself any harm, in fact, uh, in Don Revy's eyes, I would have thought. No, without a doubt, no. no.
Well, in fact, I spoke to uh, Roger Kenyon, the Everton skipper, after the game yesterday, and I asked him first of all uh, what pleased him most about this Everton performance. The way we defended, I think, you know, um, I don't think we really panicked. Um, we played quite control football. The first half, maybe, you know, um, we panicked a little bit. But the second half we seemed to cool down, you know, and of course when we scored the goal I thought we started to play a bit of football. Mm. You've got quite a reputation now, Everton, particularly when you come to London, remembering Arsenal earlier this season of being strong, defensive and even negative sides as well. How do you answer that sort of criticism? Well, I answer it in the respect that um, any, all these criticisms we've seen, it's away from home. Nobody ever seems to watch Everton when we play at home. And when we play at home, we play some really attractive football and teams are coming against us playing the same way as what we play when, we, when we're from home, you know, that's the only way I can answer it. The crowd were very angry at times though, Roger, weren't they? They were what yeah. a load of rubbish and so on. I suppose that was their frustration probably as much. Yeah, I would think so. Um, as I say there again, if you come to Goodison, you'll hear the same, you know, the same attitude from the crowd. What did you think of West Ham today? I thought they were a good team. Uh, I take nothing away from them. Good footballing team, very skillful. Um, uh, probably a lot of teams towards the end of the game would maybe start pumping high balls in, but give them credit, they didn't. They tried to play football and a lot of near post balls. Uh, I was very impressed with West Ham. Well, Roger Kenyon had some kind things to say about West Ham, and yet I think their fans felt that the side had been off the boil maybe for a couple of three games now. Uh, Frank, do you think that's true? Um, yeah, probably so, yeah. We haven't, you know, two or three games haven't really put it together, as you no. say. But, what, uh, what would you put that down to? I don't know. I think you know we, you know, we went quite well early on in the season, and um, I suppose all teams have their you know they have their patches, and I just think that you know we might be hitting down now, and I think we're good enough to come through it. Yeah. In fact, you would have got that point yesterday. I hate to uh, elaborate on it, uh, but the the chance that in fact fell to you, and when you look at it again now, and you've seen it again uh, today. I wonder if there's anything about it that's different than it appeared to you yesterday. Here it comes now, Frank. And in fact, you know, it's incredible how quickly you made up the ground here, having challenged there on Jim Pearson. You're picking yourself up, and the next we see you is there. Now, what about it is different today? It, it looks farther out than I, I realised. Um, maybe I, you know, I could have took it round the keeper. But, you know, the lob was on. I made up my mind early. The yeah. lob. And uh, it didn't come off. Yeah, you're, you're a bit a bit heavy on the lob there, but you say you were further out today than you than you thought you were. Yeah, looking on looking on there, I would think that you know probably you could either lob it or even took it round the keeper. Yeah, but, but those chances only now. come once, don't <laughs> they? And they're so easy up in the stand. Sure, sure. Um, the goal that Everton scored, um, there was a touch of mystery about that because I think most people on our side of the ground felt that it was a minor deflection, but it had to go to Gary Jones. But as we look at it again now. Uh, you've got no doubts, of course, that it was an own goal by John McDowell. Yeah, yeah. John was unlucky, actually. It, um, actually, as Gary Jones yeah, next to yeah. you, you'll see that the ball was going outside. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It just reaction from John. It just hit him on the on the on the fire went in. And John has accepted that's an own goal. Um, I wouldn't. Know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying. <laughs> What about West Ham this season now? You've, you've started so well. Uh, do you feel you've got the quality in the club now to, to go on, not only in the First Division Championship, but uh, in the Cup Winners' Cup as well? Yeah, we're a young side. You know, we're learning all the time. But, um, I think we do very well. We've started off good enough, so I think we can keep going. Well, I think you've done enough to uh, certainly take the eye of Don Reavy yesterday, Frank. I hope so in any case. And thank you very much indeed for coming in today. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Frank. Well, our second match today, and it's one that had a dramatic finish to it, Coventry City against Burnley. It also showed what a tough old game it can be, because you're going to see the Coventry winger Tommy Hutchison receive a terrible shin injury that required stitches, and remember he came back to play again later in the game. Pictures from ATV, commentator Hugh Johns, Coventry City in the snazzy strip of light blue. Comes rather fortuitously for Craven. Ferguson. Craven. Holmes. Brogan. Hutchison. Ooh. Lucky that was a very solid one from Mick Doherty. And the way referee Dave Wallace is walking across to Doherty, he's got that book out. Really was a very, very solid whack. So Doherty goes into the book. Well, the agony there on uh, Tommy Hutchison's face. There's no acting going on there. Really is in pain. 
That's that's a stud that's done that. And that looks very much as though it's going to need stitches. That is an open wound in Tommy Hutchison's right leg. And clearly the doctor is going to be needed to do something about that. Well, that really is a frightening sight. A frightening sight. Some of it. Nobody told him it was there. Mortimer. Mortimer again. No, the tackle coming from Newton that time. Flynn. Newton. James. Flynn. Thompson. Referee line. Advantage and Hankin in with a chance. Point blank save and again. Burnley all stemming very much by referee Wallace Saline the advantage to run to Burnley and the Hankin was unmarked in the edge of the penalty area King did tremendously well to parry a first time drive but had no chance with the second one so they're without Hankin and uh, there goes Hutchison's legs again case of double 11 that time Leighton James on Tommy Hutchison. Hutchison with the kick. Far post ball, and they all come rushing in, and they've lost it, and there's Cross for the equaliser. Burnley absolutely stunned by that one. 22 minutes into the second half, Cross has made it 1-1. The Burnley players will be questioning whether Stevenson was bundled or whether their own inefficiency allowed the ball, that cross ball coming in from Hutchison, to drop amongst them and for Cross to knock it into the net. Quite a solid section of injury time in the first half. And it would appear that the linesman has spotted Brian King stepping outside his... Uh, his goal here in the penalty area when he kicked that ball from hand. Well, as we go into injury time, this would have been an incredible moment for Brian King to have uh, innocently committed an error which could lead to Burnley snatching something out of the game, snatching an extra point out of the game. Flynn and Newton. James moving about behind. The wall not ten yards back. The wall still not ten yards back. It's far enough. And the shot for James. Deflection in the net. Late to James. Second minute of injury time dramatically snatches this victory here it's got to be now for Burnley all coming back from a linesman signal who said that Brian King was outside his penalty area when he kicked the ball upfield the free kick Flynn took knocks it across James gave it real hammer King hurled himself got his fingers to it and it goes in off the post well, let's clear up a couple of points. And first, did the Coventry goalkeeper, Brian King, move outside the area with the ball in his hand when he made that clearance, a handballing offence that led to that last-minute free kick and the Burnley winner? Here's Brian King coming out, and you can see as he drops the ball out of his hands, clearly still inside the penalty area. So maybe you could say, on the evidence of that, that Burnley were more than a little fortunate to get their first away win of the season. Another point, too, about that tackle by Mick Doherty, a son of Tommy Doherty, of course, on Coventry's Tommy Hutchison, for which he was booked. Uh, as we look at that one again, I get a distinct impression that Doherty went for the ball, and Frank Lampard was saying that the little flick that Hutchison makes here is the sort of flick that he very often made when playing against him. Here comes that little flick as Hutchison flicks it away, and Doherty goes roaring in there. A clumsy challenge, but I don't think it was particularly a malicious one, but a very painful one for Tommy Hutchison. 
and a lesson there for all youngsters watching, do wear shin guards, and that sort of thing won't happen to you. Right, now it's time for your letters, and I have an interesting little note here from Peter Barnforth of Hackney in London, who asks if we can tell him how many goalkeepers have played for England since the war. Well, I can tell you, it sent us scurrying amongst the record books, and the result was quite astonishing. So we're going to throw it back at you. How many England goalkeepers can you name who've played for England since the war? Maybe you're going to be talking it over in the pubs tonight or at work this week. And we'll give you the answer on the big match next Sunday afternoon. I think you'll be surprised just how many there are. I've also got a letter here from John Fielding of Salisbury in Wiltshire, who reminds me that in the past we've also brought you some great goals from the continent on this program, and are we planning to do it again? Well, John, we are. Indeed, we've already received the best goals seen on German television in the early part of the season, and here they come now. tell you that it was the last goal that won the competition. We shall bring you some more of those as the season progresses. A reminder also of a game this Wednesday that might have escaped you notice. Wickham Wanderers meet Monza of Italy, who won the semi-pro league and cut their last season in the second leg of a special challenge match. Wickham lost the first leg in Italy, 1-0, but it sounds like a great match coming up in the second leg at Lokes Park on Wednesday night. But our last match today, it's Newcastle United, so hard to beat on their own ground, against Tottenham Hotspur. The pictures come from Tyne T's television, the commentator's Ken Wollstoneholm. Spurs are in the all-yellow strip. And off goes McDonald. Young going with him. And a corner kick. And certainly... Willie Young seems to have a lot to learn about first division football in England. He was really given the run around by McDonald then. Beaten hopelessly for pace. Burns with the corner. Craig, oh he's hit the post and he's hit the post again. That was Tudor. McDonald is onside. Burns. Well, you might not believe that, but it all happened. Nulty to Craig. So once again, Young caught on the wrong side of MacDonald. Burns. Natras. Craig to Burns, a lovely ball. Hornicket. Nicky Burns having a new lease of life now. He started well enough in Newcastle last season, then seemed to fade, but he's now back to his best form. Craig with the corner kick. Natras, Judah is that? No, it wasn't Judah. Yes, I thought it wasn't for a start, but it is Judah. 
And what a fine opportunist goal that was when the ball hit very, very quickly back into the penalty area. Seemed to be no danger at all, and Tudor moving very quickly towards it, catches it with his head, stares it clear on Pat Jennings, and so it's 1-0 for Newcastle after 18 minutes. They restart with a free kick for Newcastle, taken by Hyde. Craig, all the Tottenham defenders coming up to play an offside game, and one of them was hanging back. And there's nobody offside, and they've been caught at it. That's Gowling. What a tremendous save by Jennings again. Corner kick. Gowling, one of four men allowed to break through. Certainly Tottenham nearly paid the penalty for playing the offside trap. Most of the defenders had moved up. One hadn't, and four Newcastle men were allowed to strict clear. Barraclough, his first touch of the ball, a corner. And Mickey Burns really getting behind that one. Direction just a bit off, though. And certainly Pat Jennings has lived up to his reputation so far in this match. Nulty. And McDonald is on side. He's missed it. One wonders how long it'll be before the substitute is brought on, and there's a chance for Barakat. He's scoring a terrible mistake by. Osgood and Knowles and the Tottenham defenders are arguing that it was a foul Knowles is down injured but Osgood and Knowles both went for the same ball this Knowles certainly went down there was some misunderstanding between the two of them and Barraclough was able to race forward tap the ball into the net for a simple goal Ralph Coates. Nice back heel flick by Duncan, but nothing coming of it. Now Pratt. That's it. Oh, that was fully 35 yards out. So John Pratt has tried a shot earlier on. Now playing at left back. Came on the ball, 35 yards out. Suddenly hit it with tremendous power. Mahoney going the wrong way. And there was never any doubt from the moment the ball hit his, left his boot that that was in the back of the net. A bad one from Nulty, and now it's Coates for Tottenham. Osgood. Oh, and that was almost the equaliser. Corner kick. Good tackle by Bird on Duncan, just as I thought Duncan was going to slot the ball into the back of the net. Neighbor with the corner kick. That's there! Well, what an incredible comeback by Tottenham Hotspur, Duncan the man rising to that center from Neighbor, getting his head right behind the ball, giving the goalkeeper Mahoney no chance. So Duncan has equalized. Jones, and it's off the line. Off the line by Kennedy, and my goodness, that could well have been the winner. So Newcastle United now in trouble in a match they should have won a long, long time ago. And what a comeback Willie. it'll do Spurs confidence the world of good I'm sure that's it for this week see you next week remember on the ball in world of sport next Saturday lunchtime the big match as usual next Sunday afternoon at 2 and we leave you today reflecting on the loss of West Ham's unbeaten record in the league and to rub it in I suppose to show you just how close the Hammers were to saving it four chances here and notice how every one of them was made by that fine number 10 Trevor Brooking 
He's all right. He's onside. A chance for Lampard. Oh, and he's hit it over. Oh, a nice little chip by him. Billy Bond's right in. Still with Brooking. This could be interesting. No. Good ball run there well by Robson. And now for McDowell. Oh, and he hit it straight. And Di Davis.